So in case you haven't noticed, I've been talking about free agents a little bit lately, between D'Angelo Russell, DeMarcus Cousins. Now we're going to talk about Julius Randle, because I think this is the time of year when these conversations begin to uh, get really interesting. Uh, Julius Randle has outplayed his $9 million player option. It would be silly of him to accept that option because the dude's been really good for the Pelicans. His low post scoring, his offensive rebounding, his general existence around the basket, I guess. The way that he goes off the dribble and uh, just pushes it, whether it's in transition or in the half court if he gets ahead of steam. There's not many guys who can stay in front of him and defenses have been collapsing on him. And without Anthony Davis, it's you could argue it's perhaps a little more difficult. I mean, there's certainly more shots to go around, but with the less minutes that Davis is playing and all that, you know, the defense can focus more on Randall, and even so, he's still playing well. And what are the expectations for Julius Randall in the offseason? Well, the first idea we got to bring up is should the Pelicans look to re-sign him? Because I think... We don't know what Anthony Davis is going to go for, whether it's to the Lakers, the Celtics, the Knicks, or whoever gets the number one pick. Somebody else completely, who knows. But assuming that nothing crazy happens and Davis is not on the Pelicans um, going into next year, I guess, you know, there's a chance that they want to uh, kind of balance it out where they can be respectable with Drew Holiday and Julius Randle and then you can use the return for Davis to either help that out or you can get a bunch of young guys and you can kind of have like a best of both worlds situation going on because Drew is, I mean, he's 28 right now. You got to assume he can go into his 30s, assuming he is done with the injury trouble that plagued him early on in his career. Randall's 25 and then the return for Davis is going to be something that could be, you know, a, a, an avenue to go with if you're the Pelicans. And, and at that point, I think Randall can probably be expecting somewhere between 15 to $20 million, I would say. I mean, you could argue that his box score numbers are a little better than how good he's actually been because he's been putting up 21 and 9 this year. But I think you could also argue because of the way he scores when it's just so often around the basket that his efficiency is through the roof and as a result his numbers may actually be underrating how good he's been this year I mean his turnovers have been down Uh, his true shooting percentage is 61 percent which is excellent he's been I'm going to assume one of the better rebounders in the league based on percentages I mean rebounds per game is is at nine a game which is not towards the top but that stat can be a little wishy-washy um, you always have to deal with him on the offensive glass. I mean, Randall's legit. Now, I guess the fear could be, well, what about the fit? If he's got to be a power forward and we have a center who's not Anthony Davis, who doesn't draw as much attention, can't step out as much. Yeah, these are things that you got to take into account, no doubt. But with how good Randall has been, I think for the Pelicans, it makes a lot of sense to be like, let's just get this guy back and then we'll figure out the rest of the stuff later. Also, the fact that Randall's been kind of making threes this year, he only takes about two a game, but he's shooting 35% from three. There's reason to believe the Pelicans will just be like, you know what, we'll just put you at the four. We can get whatever center we want to, and sure, we still want you attacking the rim, but we don't think it'll be a disaster with you and some other guy, especially because Randall's floater game has been kind of all right this year. I mean, he's mainly just shooting at the basket, but when he does choose to take floaters and things like that, um, the percentages are pretty all right. So I think Randall's fit can be good, and they can just embrace him as a team, and they can just be like, you know what, we don't know how what your ceiling really is, Julius, but we're totally fine with finding out, and um, you know, that's a real possibility, and if I was the Pelicans front office, um, I would give a, I would probably do that, I'll just, I'll just say that now. I would certainly want to bring Julius back, but of course, NBA free agency is a wild thing, and Randall could end up on a different team. The question is, what team could it be? Well, I think it's safe to say he's not going to be towards the top of team's priorities. He's probably going to go to some team like after the DeMarcus Cousins of the world sign, because you probably look at Randall as the next best thing. Although I wouldn't be shocked if some teams liked the idea of Randall more, depending on the way Cousins uh, looks towards the end with this Warriors thing. He's looked good lately, but we still have to leave open the possibility that his uh, 
his injury is going to catch up to him at some point. Who knows? Not in the sense of missed time, but in the sense of not looking as athletic and things like that. And Randall's 25 and just had the best season of his career and probably would cost less than DeMarcus Cousins. So, you know, that could get wild. Who knows? But anyway, um, just looking at the teams who have cap space, I mean, you know, with all the aspirations the Knicks have, maybe Randall would be viewed as a bit of a fallback option. And that could be interesting. I mean, maybe you could argue between him and Mitchell Robinson, who you've got to think is their ideal future five, depending on who else they may sign. That could get weird. Maybe it's not weird at all. You'd certainly be physically uh, something to deal with between those two. Um, Constant alley-oop threats and all that. I could picture the Clippers talking themselves into Julius Randle. I guess the him and Gallo thing could be weird because they both kind of play the same position, but... You know, maybe Randall can play more time at center. He certainly plays bigger than his height. Another team I look at is the Brooklyn Nets. That could be something because of all the ball handlers they have, but also those ball handlers all want to shoot, so there may not be enough shots to go around for Julius Randall. Could the Lakers get in on him for as funny as that would be? I don't know. I mean, LeBron's basically a power forward, and... Um, Julius, while his shooting looks a little better, he's certainly not a shooter like that, and you could argue that that's what that team really needs right now, but he could get him some buckets. I don't know. That would be a weird one. Uh, There are certainly other teams with cap space. I don't know if Phoenix would be the best thing. I mean, if you wanted to go with an all-offensive lineup, not to say that Julius' defense is bad, but he's clearly better on one side of the floor. I mean, between Devin Booker, TJ Warren, Julius Randle, and DeAndre, and that might be a pretty damn difficult four-man group to defend. Then you just throw either a respectable point guard or a capable 3 and D guy like Mikael Bridges in there. Hey, you know what? I don't know what the defense is going to be. Granted, Aiton's been better lately, but that team could certainly score, and the Suns have been desperate for scoring. Of course, there's always the chances of a sign-in trade where some other team that already is swamped with salary could talk themselves into Julius Randle. Then it starts to get a little weirder. Um, I guess if if things went really south for the Celtics in the sense of Kyrie left and Horford opted out, because then he'd be another guy who could just fit in with all the like mid to low 20-year-olds they have. Maybe that would be one too many guys who wants to shoot, which has been a problem for them this year, but... I don't know, that one just came to my brain all of a sudden. Um, Yeah, another team that has some space is the Jazz. Favors and Gobert has worked a little bit. I don't know if uh, Randall and Gobert would be much better. Yeah, Julius Randall's a very interesting player because you could argue sometimes his fit is not the best or it's a little awkward, but you could also argue that he's so damn good at scoring at the rim and he's capable enough as a ball handler and his shot has gotten a little better and he's toned down on some of the silly things that he did early on in his career in terms of hoisting up bad shots or whatever to where his fit will actually be fine with a lot of teams. I don't know. I think it still depends on the coach. It depends on the players around him. But Julius has certainly made progress throughout his career Um, Not just in terms of the numbers and all that, but really reading the game. So, again, if I was the Pelicans, I would look to re-sign him. But you never know. Some other team could really love the idea of Julius Randle.